Episode 11. Hi everyone, this is Pure Love. Pure Love is a talk show between myself, the parental unit, and my offspring, Amanda. I am the unicorn. I am the mermaid. <laughs> and this show is about sustainable relationships with our children, talking about sex, and using the sex talks to combat child sexual abuse. Um, and really talk about power, oppression, rape culture, all of that stuff. Um, so we've been sharing a lot about ourselves. And today, episode 11, is about... <laughs> Triple X and kink. <laughs> <laughs> so today is very, very special. Yes, it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so this episode, the topic for this episode came about because my daughter was just like... Um, kind of asking me some questions, and I was like, before I answer, let's just do it on camera, so... Two birds, one stone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, a, I guess a backstory. Um, I'm a part of, like, you know, group chats, and just because I am a part of the queer community, like a sub community of the queer community mm -hmm. is the kink community so a lot of people that i know it's like the like the poly kink and queer all like make this venn diagram so i know i've been meeting a lot more people and a lot of them are into kink and have talked about dungeons and play parties and all types of stuff things that i've heard about growing up and that i've known of but i've never participated or experienced anything so there's people that like I guess some kind of dating, talking to, situationship, whatever. Situationship. Yeah, because <laughs> um, you know like we're just chilling, but um, they're really into kink. Um, there's one guy that I'm speaking to who's actually a dom in the world and is a a master to a few other women. So I was wondering like, because I mean you know you're always interested about it because it's so like dark and taboo. So I was always kind of like like wondering about it because i know i'm not completely vanilla but i'm not like belgium chocolate either <laughs> so i'm just trying to find what i would like what i would enjoy and like you know how to go about that how do i look for dungeons how do i like go to these parties to be exposed to things without it being like the wrong type of situation right. to be in because that can always turn really ugly if it's in the wrong hands or the wrong facilitators or mm -hmm. the wrong people mm -hmm. participating so I, um i definitely just i knew that my mom is the best person to ask <laughs> if I would ask anybody about kink, so that's where the conversation started. Alright, so, ask away. So, um, how did you first get into kink? Like, what, how did you first, like, did you go to a party, or did you go to a dungeon, or did somebody, like, spank you and you were like, whoa! <laughs> like, how did this whole thing start for you? Yes, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Actually, looking back in relationships, uh, sexual relationships that I had, I was a little kinky, but I just didn't use that word. I didn't know what that was. We were doing it, it's some always, stuff. You're a freak. Yeah, exactly. It was like freakish stuff, right? So we were doing things, me and my partner, whether it was maybe spanking, hair pulling, a little, you know, um, aggressive, in quotes, aggressive talk, um, puppy play. <laughs> Which is, you know, other stuff, you know, like a human person uh, pretending to be a puppy and getting like the head rubs and fetching and things like that. That's like advanced stuff. But <laughs> my knees I was, aren't good for that. I got bad knees. <laughs> I was doing that, but I didn't know. It was just like it really came natural with yeah, some of the people fun. that I was with. So, yeah. But what I did, uh, what happened was I started learning the the safety stuff around it, right? Like. Uh, and being more contracts and more intentional that that's the thing it was like more intentional like I am doing this thing I this is what I want this is what I don't want uh, so uh, I think uh, once I was I picked up or this woman we picked each other up way back when and <laughs> we went back to my place and we started fooling around and she got um, kinky you know like asking me to spank her and call her names and things and I had not 
at that point, that was like the like the onset. I was kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, what does she want me to do? And I was just like, you know, like, bang, <laughs> bang. And she was like, harder, harder. And I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so afterwards, I was a little freaked out because there was no context, right? Like, I, I had never done that. We never talked about it. I didn't want to hurt her, like, yeah. all this stuff. So I got curious, and I started asking questions and started reading stuff. She actually gave me books. We ended up having a, a relationship for several months. She gave me several books to read, and, like, kinky erotica. And when I started reading it, it was like, Ooh. like, wow, this is very interesting. Yeah. I yeah. really like this. No one's ever talked about this before. So naughty. But, so I just started <laughs> going to workshops, reading, um, and and being polyamorous and kinky kind of happened at the same time. Yeah. And so I was just like exposing myself to people. And in that, I found that all the groups and things that I was going to were predominantly white. So I began my own um, group uh 20 something years ago or 20 years ago almost almost yeah i started a group called shades of poly and I remember that. through that i started doing kinky stuff doing workshops and forming community around people of color who were thinking about it doing it and not calling it kink thinking it was a white thing yada yada and that's yada. a big thing this is like that's what white people do and i'm right. like right. and i think a big thing a part of it is too and i think with me i thought about it is the whole slave master thing being a person of color and right. when it's a predominantly like white thing because right. i'm like there's no way in hell i'm mm -hmm. gonna be a slave to a white master even if it's consensual you right, know like right. i would not feel comfortable with that right. i would if i were to do that i'd be more comfortable with someone who's poc right right person of color and so like so and that's everybody's prerogative right because i know people of color who play white people and it's totally fine the thing about kinked for me when the the, the great takeaway for me was that it is, um, it's just like, it's written, right? It's like, I am this, you are that. I like this, you like that. And let's come to the middle. Let's do this. This is the safe word. We'll have an hour to do this. So, to me, it was so logical and so clear and, and also so taboo in a sense that, you know, we were messing with things, but with a person who in real life, you know, uh, treated me fantastically lovingly and um we grew together and then we had these moments where we played with power you know mm -hmm. uh, very consciously and i have to say and i've said this over and over and over again my experience not other folks but i'm speaking from my experience that kink was one of the huge the biggest um mechanisms or, or vehicles for my um healing and my survivorship uh, because of that logical thing, because of um, safe words, because uh, I, boundaries, yeah, the boundaries, and also because it's encouraged to talk to people and say, yeah, I'm not into that. I'm into this. I like this. The negotiating like part, right? You and get to say what you want and how you want it. I was like, this is a whole new world. It was like I Beautiful. am connected to my body in a different way. I got, I had to know about you know anatomy things uh, you know uh, safety stuff around how not to hurt or how not to get hurt and pressure points it was just just a uh, it called to me in a big way and it really helped me through my healing and even today um my i have to say kink is the biggest connection in terms of like when i when i have relationships like i I like to have a kinky, you know, kinky aspect of my life. Actually, it's all of my life, really. Yeah. You know, um, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. It makes me happy. It's logical, you know, and and it's great. You know, I feel good about it. Um, let me see. Like, I know, like for me personally, I'm just like, how would I find said dungeons, and what would I be? What would I? What am I? expecting you know like what would i expect if i were mm. to go to a dungeon like what's the decorum what like you know like what kind of vibe is it do right. i have to dress a certain way is there like a code word i have to say at the door like because you know you only see movies and yeah, see yeah, stuff yeah. about it and they're like what's the password <laughs> and they're like yes there's a, there's a mistress waiting there saying get yes. it right right <laughs> yeah and then there's always like a sleazy party where everyone is just like going at it and then somebody walks up to you like mm -hmm. <laughs> all slinky and i'm just like i don't want that like i don't want any any unwanted touching right. Right. so i'm just like are there is there a contract you sign at the door like what safety precautions do they mm -hmm. take like you know like all types of stuff i just want to know how i would go about that if i were to try to like oh you know let me see what it's about mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. one day 
Well, first I want to say, just like any interaction, whether it is vanilla, how they say when people are not kinky or kinky, doesn't matter. There's always potential for bad things to happen, right? So just because you're kinky and you have your safe word and you've negotiated and you have boundaries doesn't mean that it will happen that way. Mm -hmm. It is just more an acknowledgement. So there's no... There's no confusion afterwards oh, and I say, didn't well, know. right. I didn't know you didn't want you didn't that. No, actually, me. you did know because I said right it in writing. and you've crossed that boundary. So it, it, it's almost like a, it teaches, if you do it the right way, accountability. It teaches that I didn't like that, so you know I want to do this instead or I'm going to say my safe word. And a lot of people say red, yellow, green, red, stop completely. You don't even have to process this shit. It's, it's just, just stop yellow ease up a little bit green go 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 this is feeling great i'm loving it right so we have a lot of those mechanisms so just to say um you can create a container of safety uh, and also know that you know there are people and situations that shift things so i don't want to create this like beautiful pink bubble that that everything is wonderful there so and and in that so there are dungeons there are people who create play parties which i used to do in our home um so there are play parties in people's homes so the the atmosphere can change greatly it could be huge or it could be this tiny little you know studio place with that has a mattress and a, and a bench so somebody could bend over and get spanked right so it's always going to shift depending on what city you are in or all that uh what you can expect is also very different some places will have contracts as soon as you walk in and basically it says you are over this age for some places it's over 18 other places over 21 you understand that this is a play party you will not touch anyone without consent you know um you have your own equipment you will clean the equipment that you use here like all of the kind of safety precautions you sign it you go in right some places have memberships and stuff other people have like i said in their homes and you come in and it's like you just come in so some places will have an opening circle where they're, hey, let's introduce one another. Let's say our pronouns. Let's say what we're looking for. And then let's talk about the rules. And now everyone have a good time and play, right? And I'm going to use the word play a lot, and I'll say what that is. But And then other places is there's no opening circle. You go there. You know it's a play space. You go in and you kind of look around and then you try to find someone who wants to play with you and it's up to you to decide how you're going to negotiate that. Okay. So you're like, um, and when I say play, that's a, like a, it's a broad kind of term that a lot of people use to say play or scene, right? So it's like, would you like to play with me? I like using that word because it's like, you know, it's like play is so subjective. So if, you, if somebody says yes, what does that mean? So now we got to sit down and talk about, well, tonight, because it doesn't mean that it's every day of your life you want to do this different. right it's like tonight i'm looking to make out or i'm looking to get spanked a little bit i haven't been spanked in, spanked in a long time so maybe i'm a little tender so please check in with me um i'd like to um have some name calling and then afterwards you know aftercare is like a hug and a cup of water you know or some people are like i don't need aftercare i'm kind of fine with that and that's just the care afterwards right because people are exchanging energy and then Sometimes people need something, right? So the top could say uh, there are tops and bottoms, usually used in sexual context, who is giving and receiving, or there are dominants and submissives. Uh, there are masters and slaves. There are mistress, uh, uh, madams, mistresses, um, and um, you know, uh, service people. Like it, there's a lot of different language, also subjective. Some people like to have a definition for these, but people kind of use them interchangeably. So just because somebody says, "I am a master," it's good to ask, like, what does that mean to you, mm -hmm. right? Because you never want to just make assumptions around that. And so each space is going to be different. Um, you know, so uh, one of the things that I used to do is I used to go with friends just to yeah, like as I a safety go precaution. <laughs> you know, yeah. The very, 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 very first time I ever went to a play party, uh, I was a little traumatized. I went with someone, and it was like a lesbian and trans uh, party. It was predominantly white in New York, um, and it was fantastic to walk into and like witness people just like being so open and like really showing their desires and playing out in public. And did, what a what a like a gift to like witness these yeah. things. So I love to watch people. I also like to be watched. It's just, it's, it feels non-secretive. That's the thing. Uh, for, for someone who's come from like secret and shame, 
to be open like that feels like amazing the breath to of fresh me. Air. Yeah, it's like yes, I see you. I see your desire. I see how you like to do that. And, and it's I not like wrong, to do this. We're not yeah. ashamed. And right. Mm. So I went to this party. Uh, I'm walking around. I'm scared. Never been there. <laughs> I'm hearing all these sounds and everything like that. All I'm also smells. intrigued, but this white woman came up to me and at the time I was a lesbian um, so I was uh, looking um, um, more cis female identified and so uh, this white woman came up to me and kind of just said you know I'd like to tie you up and whip you so that was like I was shocked and I was like appalled I didn't want to be there now in the context of a play space I get it you know that's the language you use what, but for a first time, right? Right, like, and also this has been the, the 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 big piece of the work that I've done in the kink community is about talking about race and class and ability mm -hmm. in kink spaces. Because just because you're kinky doesn't mean that you're just an, an evolved person um, that that transcends, uh, you know, like uh, racism and yeah. sexism, right? So when a white woman came up to me to say, "I want to tie you up and whip you." Um, that was scary to me. I think it might have been a little different if she said, would you like to play with me? I am a dominant. These are the ways I yeah. play. Um, you I, know. If a white person came up to me, right. I'd be like, excuse me? Right. <laughs> and so she you know, she didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. It just landed on me a certain way. This is new to you. Yeah. Right. And so um, it made me think a lot about uh, power in kink and in kink spaces, but also how as people of color, poor people, trans, queer people, differently um, abled people yeah like uh, that we come into those spaces um we can't leave our identities at the door we can't just be like oh i'm gonna leave my blackness and my indigenous you know like being indigenous at the door right now and then i'm just gonna come in and just be kinky mm -hmm. um and and f actually for me i can't do that maybe other people can and there's no judgment there but that's the way that i navigate it so Safety is subjective, mm -hmm. you know, but it's good to go in there maybe with a buddy um, and just, I would say, the first time you go, kind of observe. Just look around yeah. and see what people are doing and how it goes. So my final question. Um, That's it? Final question? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, I just, I wanted like a quick little thing because I'm like, it's still, I'm still thinking about it. It's mm -hmm. not like, I wanna, if I'm going to take a more serious approach to it, then I think, well, you know, we could do more. Okay. Like, okay. But like, because I know you said every place is different, but like, so for example, in the movie Nymphomaniac, uh -huh. um, the main character, she went to like this dungeon place mm -hmm. to have this guy tie her up and beat her and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the way that it happened was she just walked in and he just like, just started telling her to do stuff. Right. So I'm like, would that, is that, how realistic was that scenario in the movie? I would, I actually think people talk a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know every kinky person in the world. So... Um, I, I would say it's a possibility that it could happen like that, but I would think that it's a person that's really sure of it, right? That wants to and doesn't feel obligated just because somebody calls themselves a master. For me, personally, I need to have those conversations. So I identify as a top-heavy switch, meaning switch. I can be submissive and I can be dominant, but these days I've been more dominant than, than, you know, than submissive. And so for me, uh, as a dominant, I have to ask questions. I, I want to be a responsible dominant, yeah. so I ask people with great if power they have, comes great responsibility. <laughs> if they In have kink. injuries, if they have, if um, if there are any triggers, definitely, uh, and I identify what a trigger means to me. You know, like not just every day. I mean, like a trigger, like yeah. something's going to put you in some hole uh, or yeah. something. Um, what your desires, are, you know, like, and, and it all depends. Is is this pickup play that we're in a play party and we're gonna? do a scene for you know 30 minutes or is this a person that's potentially going to be a lover or a person for a longer right. sessions I so guess. you can okay. go deeper with questions and things like that but there are parameters around that you know like what what do you want what do you desire and if you don't know what you want it's like i've not done this before and i'm willing to, to explore yeah. right because um, i feel like according to like the way you described yourself i guess i would be a what is it a a sub heavy switch then <laughs> I guess because I'm like I guess I enjoy being submissive uh -huh. but not all the time right. so sometimes I want it depending on who the person is the situation I can be the aggressor or I'm not mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I guess it kind of depends I guess I would be a, a sub heavy switch yeah and people get to decide too for some people it's like we only do this when we decide and we're having sex and we're gonna play right or 
um, every time we see each other, meaning anytime we're in space together, this is how we interact with one another. Or for some people, they say 24-7. A lot of people say 24-7 doesn't exist because we have to live in the real world. Yeah. But for, you know, I'm not going to argue that, but some people use the term 24-7, meaning that it's mostly throughout their entire life, the way they interact with their partner. It's a lifestyle. And everything. It's a lifestyle, right. So it, it differs. It's a, such a long spectrum. And kinky can be from a person who a likes to... Term. A person who likes to be uh, hair pulled and spanked, right? To all the way, you know, to other ends of it that like people like to get peed on, right, right, yeah. or you know, get cut and things. And this, is, to me, this is not a conversation about. Oh my God, why do people like that? I, I think it it really boils down to it's about power. It's about an intentional um, tryst with power with other people who are uh, who want to do that and agree to it. That's it. We all. We all like power. We all play with power in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And so this is just an intentional way to do it sexually um, or in that sexual realm. For some people, kink has nothing to do with sex, however you define sex, whether it's penis and vagina, vagina and vagina, penis and penis, however the case may be. Um, for some people, sex has nothing to do with it. It has to do with purely the interaction of power, uh, the power dynamic. And for some people like me, sex and power are completely um, combined um, together. So when I dominate someone, um, sex is always a part of it for me. Right? So for everybody that switches, what I think the biggest takeaway is you can have this overarching idea, you know, definition of kink and stuff, but really the nitty gritty of it is what you talk to somebody about. And it really is, it really gets down to how comfortable am I talking about sex, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're not comfortable, it's going to be really hard to negotiate what you want, right? So it goes way back to sex education, comprehensive sex education, the complete comfort to just say, yeah, I don't like when somebody, you know, puts their finger on my asshole, Ew. you know? <laughs> so graphic <laughs> but I mean like you know yeah. you know and you, you know, know right because somebody might be like I really like anal kind of playing and then you know you could easily say I actually don't like that at all or I've never tried it willing to try my safe word is okay. so we could try it and if I don't like it I say my safe word is done mm -hmm. right um, so it, it, it's it's a journey you know and I'm still in that journey after almost 20 years like really learning myself learning myself as a dominant each relationship I'm in where I'm a dominant I learn more about myself I hope I become better and better um, and as a submissive the same way I learned a lot about patience and service and all of that and to me the kinky BDSM community for me is really tied to service and education uh, so we uh, are heavily a community that educates 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 uh, we love talking about our sex and stuff so we're always educating and sharing stories uh, for those who are publicly out as kinky, because there's a lot of kinky people who, who don't go to dungeons. They do it in their bedrooms. Uh, and service, uh, the service that we do, kinky community, um, it, it, you know, like gives service in terms of um, a lot of sex educators. Um, and even as a group, there are lots of groups that do um, activist kinds of work around HIV, around, um, you know, uh, combating rape culture. Like, so a lot of kinky people are active and really connect um, the political to our kink especially because kink has been such a this you know dark thing and people are weird and or you people know. attach a stigma to it or right. assume that anything goes because you're a kinky person exactly exactly yeah. if you say you're kinky you're like oh well then you like anything it's the same thing when people will be like oh you're a lesbian so you like every woman on the world in the world you know not true right not at all um, so very subjective wonderful journey for me for some people it doesn't work at all you know but it's for people to choose I like that it is it should be a choice it is there and you can choose to dabble in it or choose not to I think for me my biggest thing is if I were to agree to have because you know like in order for me to be in this context for me to be someone's slave I have to agree and give up some power to this person who I'm right. allowing to be my master because right. we're both agreeing to do this I would have to find someone who I would feel safe with mm. having that little bit of control or power over me for however allotted time it is. Right. 
you know so i feel like that's a big thing the trust because it's all about trust and communication and boundaries like if we're doing things that are kinky like i'm trusting you with my body with mm -hmm. my safety depending on what we're doing like if it's asphyxiation play i'm trusting you with my life mm -hmm. so i'm like i definitely if i were to seriously dabble into it i need to find someone who i trust completely mm -hmm. with myself mm -hmm. and i say this that some people absolutely need to do exactly what you just said and other people are very fine going to a play party and doing a scene with someone calling them sir or master or ma'am or madam and being okay with it they don't need to know the person they just want to experience so again it's also a spectrum in how people get there but um i would say too that say this, um, that when I always talk about kink, or other people talk about kink, we're always saying we're like, we need to talk because I have my life in other some, somebody's hand because this is kinky. And I have to say, this should go across the board. Yeah, for not any, just for kink, but yeah. Any kind of sexual activity, right? Because we are putting our trust into someone. We are doing all these things. It's just another part of that spectrum yeah. I talked about, right? So we should be a culture that's talking very openly and honestly about our desires and all that stuff and and being able to say yeah i like it no i don't let's do this again let's do that more let's do that less especially because right? it's such a humongous part of our culture and society it should be an open conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but religion okay. <laughs> so any last questions about kinkiness i feel like maybe we can have a part two Right. to talk about an update in my, <laughs> my journey to kink the chronicles <laughs> of Amanda's kinky journey <laughs> <laughs> all right as always thank you everyone so much for like you. Uh, listening to us you know subscribe like, <laughs> like share comment yes. add questions we love to hear from you guys we love answering your questions responding so just send it all our way share our videos let everyone know yes yes, yes. we appreciate all your feedback thank you so much and you can find us on youtube uh, pure love talks or my website igrivera.com thanks everybody thank Bye. you and remember <laughs>